The first two videos this week were about curve sketching. Now I want to do a similar thing, but in a more applied setting. Instead of just having a function, I want to now start with a model. First curve sketching, I had a well-defined set of eight things to check. For applied mathematics, for models, this is going to be more open. So here are several things I might want to do, but this is not a prescribed list. Um, it's just some possibilities, things that I might want to know about a model. As with curve sketching, I always want to know about the domain. But the only difference now is that I might have model restrictions in addition to strictly mathematical restrictions. If the input is temperature in Celsius, well then the domain cannot start below negative 273 and is bounded above by whatever reasonable maximum temperature the situation has. I can ask for starting and ending values, and this is a bit like asking for intercepts, but now I'm thinking about the model, where the model starts and where the model ends. I can ask if the model breaks anywhere, if there are any unreasonable values or unreasonable limits, place where the model, places where the model doesn't make sense. And vertical asymptotes often show this kind of behavior. I can ask for the long-term behavior. This is the same as asking for the limit as the input goes to infinity, but now with the interpretation of long-term behavior of a model. I can also ask about growth rates, and this is the same as asking for the derivative, but again with the interpretation of the model. And finally, the biggest new thing that I can talk about is the holistic picture. What's the narrative? What story is the model telling? And then can I critique the story? Does the model make sense? Is it telling a believable story? This kind of holistic interpretation is a great way to think about the behavior of functions and the kind of thing I hope you are able to do after completing this course. That's because only if you have a good command of the definitions and ideas can you do this kind of holistic analysis. So let me go into examples. Here's a function that models the radioactivity at a site. Capital T is measured in years, and R is measured in grays, sorry, lowercase t is measured in years, and R is measured in grays, the unit of radioactivity. This is a piecewise function. The behavior for the first 100 years is different from the behavior after 100 years. The domain here is positive t, and there's no reason to put a limit on time. And since this is a piecewise function, I want to know if it is continuous at its crossover point. I take the limit from the left and the limit from the right approaching the crossover point at 100. In this case, both limits are 8, so this is continuous. The starting value is 3 by evaluating r of 0. There are no vertical asymptotes. The long-term behavior is decay to 0 since the exponent in the second part of the function is negative. That means there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, and it also means that the long-term behavior is that the radioactive radioactivity will decay away and eventually become very, very close to zero. I can also look at the derivatives at the rate of change. And there are two pieces again, so the derivative is different on each piece. I haven't shown the calculations here, but the derivative is positive on the first piece of the piecewise function and negative on the second. And that tells me that radioactivity is increasing for the first 100 years, reaches a maximum, and then decreases eventually to zero. For some measurement of safe, a site can be considered unsafe if the radioactivity is above 5 grays. I can calculate when this happens. In approximate value, this happens between t equals 63 and t equals 167.8. So by this judgment, the site is unsafe after 63 years and it remains unsafe until after about 168 years. This is the kind of judgment that is much more about the model. For an arbitrary function, the value 5 is no more important than any other value. But in applied mathematics, there are important values and thresholds depending on the details of the applied situation. Finally, what is the story here? Increasing radioactivity for 100 years and then decreasing. Well, maybe something is producing more radioactivity. Maybe this is an industrial site that is used for 100 years with some industry that has radioactive waste. Or maybe it has a natural cause, perhaps a deep sea vent that for some reason has radioactive magma released from it. In any case, it is, a belie it is believable that something is causing this radioactive contamination. The values here are all believable values. The function doesn't suddenly include any impossibly high values. Well, then after 100 years, something changes. Maybe the industry stops. Maybe an earthquake closes, closes the vent. Something happens, and then the remaining radioactivity decays over a long period of time, which is exactly what radioactivity does. So all in all, this seems like a reasonable model. 
Lastly, here's a graph of the model with a point where it exceeds the dangerous level of five grays labeled. Again, this seems like a situation that could happen, a story that is believable. Here's another model, this time of population. The domain is positive t, again with no reason to limit time. The starting value is p equals 100, found by just inserting t equals 0 into the model. Unless otherwise said, I'm always going to assume that models start at 0. What is the behavior? Well, the function has two pieces, exponential decay and sinusoidal oscillation. The long-term behavior is decay to 0, but as this decay happies, happens, there is variation. The amplitude of the sine term is, term is 10, so the variation is minimal compared with the starting value of 100, but still quite noticeable. Here's a rough graph of this behavior. You can see the decay as the overwhelming behavior, and the oscillation as the more minor behavior on top of that. Again, I can ask if this makes sense. Would a population do this? Well, decay is certainly believable. Populations do decay, and exponential decay is a reasonable model. But what about this oscillation? Well, the oscillation happens once a year, and one obvious explanation for this is a seasonal variation. The population grows a bit in the summer and decays more in the winter. And overall, the summer growth is not enough to make this population viable. The winter loss is always greater, but this may be an explanation for the periodicity in a population function. Finally, here's a temperature function based on time in minutes. Unlike the previous model, this one isn't given as a function, but instead given as a differential equation. This can also happen. Sometimes all that I know about a model is a DE. Well, I can work with that sometimes. Things like phase line analysis can figure out the behavior, even if the differential equation is difficult to approach. In this case, the DE is fine. I can just integrate both sides in lowercase t and solve it to get the function. The temperature model, uppercase t equals negative 3t squared plus 6t plus c. The c value is unknown unless there is an initial value, so let's say there is an initial value of 12 degrees, so t equals 12. Then what can I do with this model? Well, it's quadratic, and I often like to write a quadratic in a completed square form to see the behavior. Here, completing the square produces t equals negative 3 t minus 1 squared plus 15. This is a downward opening quadratic. The vertex is at 1 minute, which is the maximum since the quadratic opens downward. I don't need the derivative to get the maximum here, since I know the general shape of a quadratic. The long-term behavior is decay to negative infinity, again, since this is a downward quadratic. Here is the graph. It starts at 12 degrees grows briefly to 15 degrees, and then decays. Is this a reasonable model? Well, sort of. For a while, this is a reasonable model. This is certainly something that a temperature can do. However, in the long run, the temperature becomes a very large negative number, and that is not reasonable. Even if this is something cooling in the vacuum of space, it eventually cools to absolute zero, not negative infinity. The model is good for a while, and then it is poor. And this is often the case. Models can have a range where they make sense and a range where they don't. Whether this is a good model depends on how it is being used. If I only need this model for 10 minutes, it's probably fine. And if I'm trying to figure out what will happen hours and hours later, then it's probably not a good model. Hopefully these three examples give you a sense of what I'm going for with model analysis. I don't have a set checklist, but I want to do enough to understand what the model is doing, what it is saying. I use whatever tools I can from the course. Almost everything we've done can be applied to some model. Then I try to understand the whole picture as best I can. And this really was the goal of the course, understanding the behavior of functions, putting it all together, being able to analyze the complete picture of models like these.